the love that these two characters have for each other is one of the great Star Trek love stories. Um, just seeing how much they deeply care for and accept one another and, and are there for one another is really inspiring to, to me. Um, uh, I, I, I really felt that a lot of season two was kind of, if you took and made a, a broad view of the season, that it's very much about sacrifice. What will we give up for each other? And here at the beginning of season three, I feel like we are experiencing a little bit from the crew the consequences of, of that sacrifice and that, that need to make a connection with each other. So the characters all feel like, okay, the sacrifice was worth it. Like we are, this is scary. We're a thousand years in the future. And, and we, we, we don't like, we don't know where we barely know when we are. Um, And the crew as a whole is not doing very well emotionally as a result of that. So in this episode that we just watched, we got to see some really intense conflict on Star Trek, which surprisingly is not very common on Star Trek. My Star Trek, we had a rule. (laughs) There's no conflict among the bridge crew. We're all on the same page. There is this amazing, beautiful, uncomfortable dinner scene that Saru puts together and brings everyone together. And we get to see you guys as a family at this family dinner. Who hasn't been at a family dinner like that? But at one point, uh, 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 during that that dinner, it just blows up, and we know it's coming, and it feels awful, but we know it's going to be there. Would you both talk a little bit about the emotional state of the crew, um, and how your characters relate to the crew's emotional state as you are getting specifically to that moment, which just feels like such a such an important moment in in the development of these of these characters and their relationships. Well, I think it's one of the things that our writers have done such a beautiful job is uh, giving us inner inner lives and things to sort of, you know, really dig into. And yeah, we're all on duty. We all have our jobs that we do. But yeah, not neglecting the fact that we're all people and people going through something as profound as letting everything you know behind is going to have effects. You can still be really good at your job. You can still be professional. But inevitably, there's going to be jagged edges that come out. So it felt very satisfying to us that we were given that opportunity to explore that. And then the manner in which it is explored feels very authentic and, 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 and real. So it felt very, very satisfying to get to do that scene. So as that uh, emotional turmoil is, is beginning to express itself, as that emotional turmoil is beginning to, to get worked out, I am aware of uh, Culber taking on some mental health responsibilities for the crew. And what I saw, and uh, I could be projecting, but what I see is maybe the foundation of Starfleet in the 24th century putting a counselor on the ship. Do you feel like he's going to perform that function for the crew? Uh, I mean, you the actor know the answer because you filmed the entire season. I am asking you uh, uh, from from more of a fan perspective, do do you feel like, yeah, this is something that, that, this feels right, this feels good, this is helpful for me and them. Do you feel like that's kind of where he's at? Yeah, I think it feels earned and I think it feels necessary. Um, and I think it's, it gives, it presents a lot of opportunities for me as an actor, but also for the show um, to deal with those kinds of issues. So um, yeah, I think, I think it's exciting for Dr. Culber mm-hmm. to, to, to bring those two things together, that the physical and the mental are, you know, we look at, we look at a person's health, health holistically. Um, and that that is uh, the way of the future. 